Okay, we're doing something super different today. We're going to rank seeds based on how likely they are to save you money on groceries this year slash survivability. So if it's gonna help you survive a food apocalypse for lack of a better term. I use both mechanisms in my garden, so I store as well as fresh eat. So I'm looking at storability and just saving money on all aspects. So let's get into it. If you like this video, if you like this video, because if you like tier rank, I can do, I can do this a hundred times over. I can do my favorite tomatoes, tier ranking the tomato varieties. I can tier rank pepper varieties, house plants, you know, I can really, literally tier rank anything. Actually comment down below what your favorite tier rank video would be and what you want me to rank and how you want me to rank it. The one with the most thumbs up is the next tier rank video we're gonna do. <laughs> So let's get into it. Okay, so we have a ton of seeds to go through. So let's just start pounding through these. So first up we have zucchini. Now zucchini, I'm gonna say is absolutely number one. The reason for this is because people will often get upset with zucchini because they'll say, oh, it's so easy to grow. It's prolific. You can't get rid of it. You can't use enough of it. Plant one or two plants and utilize them for cooking. So you can put them in stir fries. You can eat them as a side dish. You can eat them as a main dish. Stuff zucchini, delicious. Another thing to keep in mind here is you can actually dehydrate this and turn it into a gluten-free flour that you can cook and bake with. Common misconception with zucchini is that it's useless. You don't have to plant a ton of plants, I'll admit that. One or two is good enough, but for someone that's container gardening or small-sized homesteading, zucchini is a must-have and you can get different colors as well. So Zucchini for saving money, storage ability, helping you survive the food apocalypse. Absolutely worth grabbing because it's gonna save you some big cash. Next up we have chickpeas. So chickpeas, while they are, I don't know, chickpeas, chickpeas, where should, I don't know where to put them. So chickpeas, they're high protein, but the harvesting of them is gonna be very difficult. You can also buy them for next to nothing at the store dried, and then you can pressure can them to make it a ready-made. You can also technically intercrop with these. So the space you would need to grow enough to make it worth it, I'm gonna put them at the bottom. They're not totally useless. They are a protein source that, you know, a lot of, which is difficult to find with uh, vegetables you're growing indoors or uh, in a garden, but ultimately chickpeas, I don't know. I'm gonna put it, at, it doesn't cost you money but it's not, I don't, in my opinion, it's not worth it. So the red zebra, this is a unique type plant. I guess it's a unique tomato and there's several different unique tomatoes out there. So there's black cram, there's these exotic tomatoes all over. They tend to yield pretty darn good. I personally find that they're more susceptible to blight um, as well as they can, they, they're more susceptible to disease to me. So I'm gonna put them under three. I think they're worth growing because they're cool looking, but flavor wise, texture wise, I don't, and storage wise, I don't find them that particular, particularly amazing, but tomatoes always are gonna have a place in my heart for <laughs> food to grow. So I'll put it under three. I might move him though. I may move him. So next up is the Black Beauty mini watermelon. So Black Beauty mini watermelons, they are the better watermelon to grow if you're in a colder climate. But ultimately, whenever growing any sort of fruit, I find that the yields are less than stellar um, and the flavor or texture can be less than stellar. The other thing is that watermelon, um, calorie wise, isn't particularly high, but it is nice as a treat. I personally, when it comes to fruit, like fruity fruit, I'm more for perennials. So blueberry bush, raspberry bush, that sort of thing. So, uh, and the other thing, these you'd have to grow in a container, in my opinion, in some zones in colder climates to so even get, it costs money, I'm sorry. Most, most watermelon to grow them is gonna cost you money. Just, yeah, no, that definitely. The so next is calico and popcorn. Calico popcorn, you don't have to use them for popcorn. You don't have to, you can actually use them for tortilla. Uh, nice like purple tortillas, uh, they work great for that. They 
tend to have lower, longer growing seasons. So if you have less than ideal weather, uh, very difficult to grow. The other thing is corn doesn't transplant well. It's a very sensitive to the interface between where the roots are and where the bottom of the plant is. So calico popcorn, it's, it's gonna cost you money. In my opinion, it's gonna cost you money. Now there are corns on this list that I think you should grow, but calico popcorn, not my favorite. There's better up. So this this one here, uh, the, this one variety is a Natalino. I'm gonna butcher a lot of these names, but this guy, they are, easier to grow than cauliflower or broccoli and they have a slightly different taste but texture is relatively the same i oh, i love these plants i love brassica species for consuming i love freezing them all that fun stuff however i find personally the investment to keep brassicae cabbage broccoli brussels sprout you name it cauliflower alive and well and away from cabbage moss, it's actually pretty high. You have to have the bug screens. You, in some cases, need shade cloth. You don't want them to get too warm, so you need to have them out early. Um, to be honest, I think you're better off getting frozen, in my opinion. Ah, no, I'm gonna put him here. I'm gonna put him in $2 savers <laughs> because it is, it is easier than broccoli or Brussels or uh, broccoli or cauliflower so I'll put him there oh Brussels sprouts okay so I have a blog post up about Brussels sprouts and someone uh years ago found my blog post um and basically they showed a photo of them and all this huge tower of Brussels sprouts that they ended up growing um based on the blog and my recommendation so I've grown Brussels sprouts successfully before the flavor is off the freaking Richter scale when you grow them at home on your own. However, getting them to do what you want them to do takes time and patience. They also need to be started early and they need the coverage. They need all the layers and the protection. Um, so Brussels sprouts, well, I love them. I'm gonna put them in two stars as well. Only because the flavor is off, like you cannot beat homegrown Brussels sprouts but they're intense. They're not a beginner plant. If you're a beginner gardener, that would be in a cost money, <laughs> literally in a cost money area. Um, but if you're experienced, or it's gonna save you $2, $2. Next up we have kale. So this one in specific is the, the winter blend that does really well in frost conditions. There's the Lacticino, Latino, Lacticino, but I'll insert a photo of it. But that one, I really like it. Um, that one's my favorite. Winter Blend is another favorite. This stuff, if you freeze kale, if you eat kale fresh, if you literally, I love kale. I love kale. Kale is easier to grow than lettuce, in my opinion. And it's more versatile because it can be stored. It can be dried, blended into smoothies. It can be, you know, added. It's... Four stars. Four stars because it will take you through an entire year from fresh eats to storage. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful plant that can grow in so many different conditions and can take frost like a freaking trooper. Next up we have leeks. <laughs> so leeks, some people, I did a video about this and like my least favorite plants to grow, leeks was one of them. Now I got a little bit of hate for this because everyone's like, what, you can freeze leeks. You could do all this stuff with it. My husband hates the texture of them. I'm okay with them. I'm more of an onion person. So leeks, depending on what you like and the flavor you like, I, they are easier to grow than onions though. They are easier to grow than onions. Um, no. Yeah. It's between these two. It's between these two. I'll... No, I don't know. It, we'll put it there. We'll put it there. No, we'll put it up because it does it does freeze. You can freeze them. If you got room in the freezer, the Chinooks are the way to go. Okay, next week we have paprika. Is this the first herb we have? I think it is. Okay, paprika. 
wonderful to grow for fresh eats, wonderful to grow for powdering, dehydrating, freeze drying. It's a spice. It's going at the very top. Spices are huge. It's a big deal. Spices are expensive. So expensive. Paprika goes at the top. Now, I will say, paprika in the garden, not ideal. Raised beds in ground, not ideal. Paprika in a container, A++. Container garden only for paprika. Next up we have eggplants. Oh, eggplants, I hate eggplants. Who eats eggplants? Seriously, I know some of you do. Some of you have emailed me about eggplants and you're like, how do I grow eggplants? How do I, you don't, you don't grow eggplants. I'm just, I'm joking, that's a joke. Um, if you like eggplant, then it will save you money. Now, the downfall of this is that eggplants are fresh eats only. They're not the greatest for when it comes to storage. So can it save you money? Yes. The investment, time, money, that, uh, yeah, uh. Honestly, it's between cost money and one star because you would need a heat mat to actually start these um, effectively. You would actually need a heat mat to effectively start um, an eggplant. Oh goodness, I'm not good at egg. Okay, I'm I'm leaving it there, but someone's gonna be like, I eat eggplant three times a week. It's gonna save me money. If you egg eat eggplants three times a week, then yes, it will. For me, it won't. Elma pelleted. Okay, this lettuce literally is perfect. It's the perfect lettuce. It's a loose leaf lettuce, so you can technically harvest from around the edges. However, you can also cut it as a head if you wanted to. I grow this indoors as well as outside. That's how much I love this lettuce. You can't buy it at a grocery store. That variety of lettuce you cannot buy at a grocery store. I'm addicted. I am literally addicted to this. I am specifically addicted to the pelleted version only because it's way easier to seed. So pelleted seeds are meant for the mechanical seeders that you can purchase for gardens. However, I like using pelleted seeds because I can see where the dang seed is in the soil. I have a very hard time figuring that out for some reason. So pelleted seeds, I use this variety and specifically I use both indoors and outdoors. Favorite seed hands down. This bad boy is saving me every week, probably like 20 bucks because of how much lettuce I eat. I love, love that lettuce. That is a four, four star, four, four dollars. Okay, so this one is Tavol. Um, you, spaghetti squash is what this is. Spaghetti squash is very prolific, very easy to grow. What I will say, you could grow it in containers. Um, it does best in the ground only because it will take off like crazy. Care wise, there isn't much to it. It can get powdery mildew and it will continue to produce and it will produce what feels like indefinitely. So this bad boy I'm putting up there. They also store very well, very well. I still have spaghetti squash in my cold room. Last year, my sister-in-law had spaghetti squash in her cold room to the point that she literally took the entire spaghetti squash, ran it over with a rototiller and reseeded it. Um, which be careful with that because technically there's like a type of, squash can become toxic. <laughs> Fun fact, if it's allowed to be open pollinated with other squash. So just keep that in mind. I can't remember what the name is, but I'll put it up here. I did a video on, on it in the fall. Um, so if you're doing seed sown from your own seed, just something to keep in mind there. Next up we have sugary. Now sugary or millions, any sort of cherry tomato. This is where a tomato video to your rank on its own would be good. These you can pickle or can them. I have canned my cherry tomatoes whole. You do not need to like make it into a mash. You can can cherry tomatoes whole uh, with skin on. It's very nice. Uh, very, it's, it's a tasty little pop of flavor because you pickle them classically. You can also fresh eat these. Um, and cherry tomatoes are, I mean, they're not cheap. To be honest, my house, they save us a ton of money only because we take them fishing with us on the boat all the time for eating. So I'm gonna put sugaries in three stars. Now, 
they're prolific, but they're not versatile when they are preserved. So the preserved versions can obviously be used on like cocktails. Um, they can be used for cooking to a point as well, but they're just, they're slightly limited in their use from a preserved perspective. That's the only reason why they're getting three, three of these bad boys. Butternuts, hands down, growing right to fours. Because they store so well, they can be used in so many different ways. Roasted butternut, put it into butternut squash, uh, butternut pasta sauce, you name it. That's why they're going right up there. Fern leaf dill, he's a herb. He's going right up to four stars, hands down, absolutely. This in particular, because you can dry it, um, you can use it in pickling, and it reseeds itself, which is huge. It reseeds itself, which is wonderful. I love that. Cherry, ground cherries, no. Cost money. I hate these, no. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I hate them. I absolutely hate them. They're invasive. I swear to God, they're invasive. I despise those plants. Absolutely despise them. Their flavor is horrible. I dare you to fight me on it. Their flavor is horrible. These guys, you're cauliflower. I'm sorry. It's wonderful, but it costs so much money to be able to keep your brassicas happy and healthy. So they're going into mustards. So mustards, if you're not familiar with these, um, have a little bit of a kick to them. So they're a little bit spicy. Um, not preservable. If you like eating them, then they're probably useful. They don't cost you money by any means because you can definitely start them, like just sew them direct. Not my favorite. Homemade pickles. Oh. Oh, goodness. Da -na -na -na. There. Okay, this is gonna depend. How many pickles do you eat in a year? How much relish do you eat in a year? And would you fresh eat a pickle or a, ho or a pickle cucumber on its own? If you fresh ate pickle cucumbers on its own and made like cucumber salad out of it, then I would go three. If you're not a fresh eats cucumber type person and you're just using this for relish and pickles, no. I'm putting it in three because you can direct sew it. You don't have to start it indoors. Um, yeah, we're putting it in three. Artichokes, this is a pretty plant, but it definitely costs you money. It's, it has to be container grown. It doesn't grow well in the ground. It has to be started really early indoors. So you have to have the lighting in place. Do best germinated under heat. And the result is like not much for harvestability. Now, of course you could store these if you had an artichoke storage recipe, but it takes a lot of plants to make this happen. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. We'll stop here for now, but if you want to see the rest of this tier rank, then like I said, let me know in the comments down below and I will post the second half because we're already at 20 minutes. Wild. Thanks for watching.